Here we're about to start the first game, Shirley Fu start, uh, serving on the near side in red from Canada, and Erica Wu on the far side in blue from the USA. So Han, we'll see quite a different opponent with Shirley. As a lefty, Erica's been facing a lot of different styles today from Chris Shu to Sarah Yuen. So should be interesting to see how she plays against a very fast attacking Another junior star from Canada. And Shirley Fu has a lot of power on the women's side, especially for a lefty player who stands close to the table. Erica usually deals with that kind of thing very well, so we'll see how she deals with it here. So with a player that close to the table when she gets a pop-up as compared to Chris Shu, who would pop those ball-ups but be so much further back. Not going to be so difficult for Erica to get through her opponent. Absolutely. And there you see the, the power from Shirley Fu put, putting the opponent under a lot of pressure. <laughs> and the thing that really was stopping Shirley from pulling a number of upset victories, she played really well in a couple of her matches in this competition, but she just makes a, a few extra errors on the return of serve that really give the opponent two or three extra points per game. Do you think it's more of not being that consistent or going for a little bit too much? I think it's a little bit of, of, of both. She's usually, when she, she, she misses, it's not a technique issue or even a mental issue. It's more of a footwork issue. She sometimes doesn't move to the ball like right there. She has the opportunity. The ball's sort of hanging in the air, she just doesn't move to it. She loves that serve. Watched her play against Anshi Lo, her teammate, earlier today. She likes to pull the opponent out wide to the forehand with her backhand as well as her, as well as her serve. As a lefty, those are very difficult to deal with when a player is serving that wide, because you know really your only place to return it is back cross court, and she's already camping out there ready for the return. And there Erica dealing with it really well, able to recover after every single forehand. Very controlling play from the backhand side from Erica there, staying close to the table, able to bring Shirley wide to the forehand. That really seems to have been a classic tactic or strategy that we've seen all weekend because we have had a number of lefties in the competition and that first ball strong out to the forehand really disarms them and stops their ability to step around. What's interesting is in the late 80s, early 90s, it was always the other way around. You wanted to bring your forehand strong into the opponent's backhand and Really, that paradigm has shifted in the last five to ten years. I think a combination of the number of players that have expanded or add more spin to their backhand side of the table has made that almost an equal strength in many cases. Absolutely, and there you see why it's the backhand stroke can be so much more compact and quick off the bounce. Really, the element of surprise where it's Forehand stroke is usually a little bit bigger. You need to be in position a little bit earlier. And Shirley is shown with her backhand. Very wristy, but still quite powerful. Right back within striking distance with her serve to come. Now only down by two, seven, nine in the first game. A lot of spin on that ball down the line. Erica being forced to take it early because it's so deep. Maybe a good idea to take maybe a half a step back so if she does get a ball down the line, she has some room to do something with it. There again, Shirley likes to take the opponent wide to the forehand. You really have to be ready for that. Excellent play by Erica.
well played, nice, aggressive, almost a combination or an in between a block and a hit. But Erica gets the first game victory. Erica very good at transitioning between defense and attack. So often she gives the opening to the other player, but she's very good at controlling the opposing player's spin. And right there's a good example of just covering up, and not only that, getting her body on top of the table to get over the ball, which is so important. Now it was quite unfortunate that Erica won her last match in round robin play, but because it came down to a tiebreaker and she had such a tough loss to Chris Shu that she lost in the three-way tie, even though she won her last match against Sarah Yuen, who advanced to the next round. Both of these players extremely young. Erica at 16 years old, Shirley Fu at 17. So even though both of them are essentially out of the competition, both have a great future ahead of them if they develop further. You now, one of the interviews that Erica did leading up to this tournament, they asked her if she didn't make the Olympics, would she be so disappointed? And she said, well, really, at my current age, I've got two Olympics in my cycle and this one's going to be something I can use and build for experience. And clearly, not only a great attitude, but really truthful because she's got a lot more room for improving. And she's still in school, so it shouldn't be that difficult. It's really the right attitude to have at such a young age. At the same time, you want to make the best of whatever opportunities you can get. I, I think being teammates with Lily Jung and Ariel has only helped her improve as a player. And I know that team spirit that all of them have for each other, where Erica was cheering for Ariel as much as possible last night, and then Ariel came back this morning to do the exact same. It really lends itself to not just becoming great athletes, but friends. Great placement early in this game from Erica Wu, really handcuffing Shirley in the middle. And we saw this when Shirley Fu played a number of different players. She has trouble with that area. If you can get the ball into her elbow, she has trouble moving out of the way to take it with her forehand. Again, Shirley Fu just not moving her feet in time. That wasn't a, uh, a very fast shot coming from Erica's side. Well placed balls. Mm. Clearly the ability to serve the ball so that second bounce is close to the end line of your opponent. Don't necessarily want to make a serve go four or five bounces, but that second bounce being in between a double bounce and a ball that goes off the end of the table generally garner you a lot of free points Absolutely through sharing. hesitation. And sometimes a shorter serve is not necessarily a better serve because the opponent can see that it's going to be short early, doesn't produce any hesitation on their part. first attack from Erica there, just not quite ready for the second ball. It almost seems like if Erica could develop a, a stronger like flat smash or maybe a little bit heavier spin on her second loop, that would get her, get her out of a bind on a number of these difficult shots. Because she does scramble well, she does move the ball around, but she doesn't have really two, two ways of scoring after she initiates the offense. What's interesting to me is that Ariel and Lily and Erica all come from the West Coast and, and watching their sort of court presence compared to the Canadians is very interesting. They're, they're very excitable. They get very fired up compared to the Canadian players who are just very calm and just don't show much emotion at all. Well, I know the U.S. girls feed off of the sport, the support of each other. And that was one of the key things that Ariel mentioned last night was that having her teammates in her corner really made a big difference in addition to her coaching staff and family and club mates from the West Coast. It's definitely true as we see Ariel, uh, Erica building a strong 9-4 to lead in this game. Looking very strong out of the blocks as well as mixing up and using a backhand serve against a lefty. That one seemed to get away from her a little bit. As you said, Sean, the U.S. junior teams have always produced results a little bit above what's expected just because of the team spirit. 
through the junior ranks and we compete against countries that are technically superior, like Korea, Brazil. Sometimes we can generate some good results from the players' excellent support for each other. And they call this singles or individual sport, but definitely there's team elements to it and having a supportive team can make a world of difference. Powerful backhand loop there. That's what we were talking about, the power. There wasn't much of a stroke there, but clearly going through the ball and creating an insane angle out to the forehand. Erica's got to take her time and not squander any points at the end of this game. And there she has it. Game number two. Not going to say completely comfortable, but playing her game and on her terms. Definitely in control, especially in the serve and return game. A couple of loose balls at the end of the game, but in general, Erica Wu getting the first opening when she wants it. And Shirley Fu just doesn't look comfortable, on, especially on the serve return. Doesn't seem to be in position. Seems on Erica's second and third ball, the more pace that Shirley plays with to the center of the table, the more comfortable she is. It's when Shirley can go wide out. That's when Erica has a little bit more difficulty. I think it's a little bit due to footwork and not really having as much reach as the taller Shirley. One of the things that Erica's done really well in this match is we haven't seen Shirley really cranking three, four forehands in a row the way she did against other players, even Lily Zhang. Uh, Shirley was able to get a really strong attack in against Lily. Erica's been able to control the ball in the first few balls of the rally really well. There's a strong forehand smash from Shirley Fu to open the third game. She needs a strong start here. And Shirley plays out of the Bridgeport Sports Club in Burnaby, BC, so she's on the west coast California of Canada, whereas a number of the players on the national team are playing out of Ottawa. British Columbia and Canada are actually producing a number of good players over the years aside from Ottawa and aside from Montreal, of course, British Columbia, definitely another hotbed of table tennis in Canada. Very large Chinese immigration area and the coaching is what you really see where the difference is being made and a number of clubs in the Vancouver area and a number of very, very strong players there. Clearly, California's done well from our women's team perspective as well. That's a beautiful misdirection forehand. That's almost become Erica's trademark attack, getting a slightly high ball, taking it in the opposite corner. And that can be so difficult to deal with for a player who's not used to playing defensively, throwing them off balance. What's funny, Han, is that that forehand loop cross court is actually the best place to go to a left-handed player, so hopefully Erica can use that to her advantage. She has to be careful. If Shirley does have the ability to take slow pace balls and just really crank them. Good try by Erica, letting Shirley open up on the floor and going strong to the center, but the ball just a bit long. Shirley with a nice combination there. Both a nice backhand punch and forehand topspin. 
When Shirley's playing relaxed in the rally, it can be very hard to deal with that power. As well as some of those angles that she creates being a lefty. Very snappy backhand, a lot of wrist. Amazing point there from both players. Wonderful counter attacking play. And Erica really needs to be careful here. She needs to keep Shirley moving. Small movements inside the body towards the elbow. Where we've, since we're, we've seen Shirley have the most trouble in her matches in this competition. A little bit loose on that forehand flip. And Shirley gets her first game point of the match. And there's the game. Shirley with her own combination, forcing Eric to be a little bit more defensive towards the end of this third game, winning 11 to six. It's the first time this match where we've seen Shirley really able to feel comfortable and tee off multiple times. Backhand, topspin followed by a strong forehand loop. Erica really needs to do a better job going back to what she did the first two games and controlling the opening so that Shirley's not able to tee off. These players have had such a long competition. This is their Final match for placement, just in case any of the athletes come up with an injury or deemed ineligible to play, they'll go through a rank order to see who represents their own country. And right now, you know, Erica's fighting not only for herself, but also for Lily Jong to possibly win this final event so that the U.S. could possibly get a team event would be the top three from this competition. What a treat would that be if all three California girls who repre represented us in the Pan Am Games were able to qualify for London. Erica has to stay focused on the task at hand here. Shirley definitely has proven during the competition that she's not an easy draw for anybody. Stop. Erica really needs to establish her offense early in these points. Seems like when she's starting to block versus make that first opening, these angles that are so strong. And there she goes, good first attack. Really putting pressure on Shirley's footwork. Two very quick points for Erica bringing the momentum back to her side. I'm sure Shirley has done that combo a couple times to serve deep out to the forehand and then a quick block down the line. Eric needs to be able to take that ball out to her forehand. There we go. Great defensive play there from Erica. Got herself in a little bit of trouble. Those sort of hanging balls into the middle of the table are really what Shirley Fu feeds off of, but finally able to get the ball wide out to the forehand and make Shirley Fu try to move to that ball. Caught a little bit on that forehand. 
but still leading in the match. 5-4 and 2-1 in games. <laughs> Eric has really gotten a few cheat points off her serve this game, which is a bonus for her because she's so good in the rally. Erica with another free point, really not having to work so hard, but putting constant pressure with the placement. There's a heavy, heavy backspin serve from Shirley Fu. Erica caught a little by surprise there. It's a great rally there from both players. Shirley finishing it with a powerful forehand cross court. Erica needs to react a little bit differently to those deep serves into her forehand. Needs to put it in a different location that's not as predictable. One, two. Beautiful backhand over the table. Flip, or it might as well just rename it a kill. Those long arms definitely helping out. Shirley is still unable to deal with the serve in this game. Erica very strong, building up a three to one lead right now in this final placement match for the North American 2012 Olympic Games qualifying trials. Definitely things are going according to plans for her. Final match of the competition. And one that will have an impact assuming that her teammate Lily Jong is able to come through and win in the finals. Not only that for a young player, just great match experience. You want to go out of the competition on a good note, playing just solid table tennis and Really, it's uh, very encouraging for a young player because you can see where your strengths are and where you need to continue development. And also playing against the youth of Canada at the same time. Clearly, they'll be playing many more times between Erica and Shirley. And one thing, Han, that has impressed me with our women's players is not only their intensity and their mental focus, but physically, they just never generally seem to get tired. After Lily's last match, during the on-court interview, she was asked how tired or how difficult it was playing against a chopper, and she looked like she was fresh as a daisy, ready to play the next match, and just I think it's really a testament to the number of hours they train on a daily and weekly basis that the amount of play during a tournament is so much smaller. That's really a result of the competition that's spread between those players, between each other. They really push each other to really new heights because of the fierce competition between those players, and so they really put in the hours on the table and off the table. The other element of our U.S. women's junior team 
which is also our um, has been our cadet team and our Pan Am team is beautiful forehand attacks there by Erica has been is that their focus is beating the players outside the world outside the US borders they don't really view each other as main competitors and that's really how the best countries have always done it is to focus on the foreign competition and not domestically so this type of win or match for Erica definitely bodes well for gaining some international experience Good placement on the first attack there from Erica, but just a little bit of a, a rushed second loop going off the end of the table. A little tentative on that forehand block. Didn't really move her feet. You know, it seems like Shirley's game would be more difficult to prepare for, but Erica just has a little bit better court sense, a little bit better ball placement. And I think playing in the Pan Ams and the amount of matches she had the, at the World Championships gives her the slight edge. And once they get into the fast-paced fast rallies of being comfortable, not having to go for something outside her comfort zone. It's an aggressive game like Shirley's in the junior ranks. Often they can learn the location, the placement, to deal with spin, footwork, can translate into a, a very successful game at the senior level. Of course, there are some players who play more passively. Uh, Tiago Apollonia springs to mind who play passively at the junior ranks and then learn to play more aggressively later. It's always difficult to make that transition from kind of junior table tennis to adult and it's whether you want to win matches now sometimes for the greater glory later on. Oh, Eric is putting together a nice little comeback in this game. Spot her way right back in from 4-8 back to 7-8. A timeout for Shirley Fu here trying to stop the bleeding. She needs to win this game to stay in the match. Erica at the same time has a little bit more breathing room, so look for her to be a tad more aggressive out of this timeout. I think so. It'll, I think it'll be interesting to see her development coming out of this tournament because I've been very Im impressed with her improved attacking play, especially when she steps a, a half step away from the table and is able to take it with her forehand. She's actually produced a good bit of power from that position. I think it really started Han back at the first U.S. Olympic crowds when she surprised Ariel Shing in the early round robin, early final round robin match. We got a big victory over Ariel. You see very strong and confident backhand loop there. Service now changing. We see if Shirley's able to. a nice counterattack there by Shirley Fu. In the same pattern again, Shirley was definitely expecting that this time. And after that deep serve, Shirley is just waiting in the backhand corner. Erica needs to take that loop somewhere else, either to the elbow or even down the line, which is a riskier shot, but it would seem that just a th three to four inches left of the elbow, down the tee in the court, Right there would make a lot more sense because there's no angle. If you go to the forehand, if Shirley's ahead of the ball, she can take it cross court. Absolutely. Shirley's just setting up in the back end corner, waiting for the ball in that position. Great forehand combination by Erica to deuce it up in this fifth game. A little reminiscent of how she ended the first game of the match. Very smart. Saw how she slowed down the speed of that counterattack by Shirley by just adding a little bit of extra spin on it. Match point. She 
She had the shot she wanted, I think, just going there one too many times. Surely guessed right and knew it was going there. Clutch counterattack to stay in the match. Give Shirley credit on that one. She took a chance and it paid off. Two flat forehand smashes. Erica can't be thinking that the match is over here. She has to continue to fight for points. Down game point. That ball touched the edge. Very patient response by Erica. Just so quick on that forehand. Didn't have a lot of time to wind up. Just able to get her body around the ball. Second match point for Erica Wu. <laughs> Again, Shirley just with reflexive block off that backhand kill. Erica going to that shot several times previously in the match and Shirley just expecting that ball there by now. Erica just not ready for it. A little shell shock now after those two blasts that have both come back faster than she sent them over. I can promise you if she gets a high ball on this one, she's gonna take her time and rightly so taking a time out to uh, maybe think a little bit more about placement Absolutely. than about power. I feel like on both those attacks, if, if she had just taken it to the elbow, this match might be over by now. But instead, picking a corner and going to it and surely just getting guessing right both times. I think that goes to the point that we've seen earlier, especially when Lily Jung was playing against Chris Shu, that if you're making up your mind too early, the other player can read your body position and also your racket angle. Sometimes it's better to wait a split second before you have to make that decision or where you're going to pull that trigger and get a read on their body position. So one more match point for Erica Wu. I think she needs to take this attack into the body if she gets it. And there it is. Excellent backhand opening. Well positioned, well placed. A very successful tournament for Erica Wu.